Hello and welcome to TA Academy. In today's lecture, we'll learn how to simulate a buck converter. So let's get started. I'll start a new schematic and first of all, place the input voltage source by pressing V. Then I can toggle with the mouse to select the appropriate size and I'll put this voltage source here. Then we know that at the output of a buck converter we have a second order LC filter. So I'll press the shortcut L for an inductor. Press Ctrl R to rotate it and I'll put this inductor somewhere here. I'll press C for a capacitor and I'll place the capacitor here. And then you know that during turn off the current, output current, flows through the freewheeling diode which is connected at the switch node. So switch node is where the inductor is connected to the switch. So I'll press D and I cannot place the diode like this because it has to freewheel. So I'll have to place the diode like this in an anti-parallel manner so that the output current can flow like this. So in order to simulate a MOSFET or a BJT, I will put a voltage controlled switch here. So I'll go to components and search for SW, which is a voltage controlled switch. I will rotate it and place somewhere here like this. And you know that we also need an output resistance in order to load the buck converter. So I'll press R and place a resistor here. So let's connect these. I'll press W for wire and connect the input to the switch. Switch to the cathode of the diode and the inductor and from the inductor to the capacitor and then to the from the capacitor to the output resistor and similarly I can complete the connections here we always need a ground as the sink of the circuit so this I can connect with the negative terminal So now I need another voltage source, a pulse voltage source, which would act as the control voltage for this voltage control switch. So I'll press V to add another voltage source and right clicking on this, I will go to advanced options and select a pulse. So we need to give it a pulse which starts from zero initially goes to V on of one volt. So the delay, let's put it zero, rise time and fall time also zero because this is an ideal simulation. We just want to see buck converter operation with a spice simulation. And T on, I will put it as T on within curly braces so we will define the parameter T on as well as the period T so let's place this pulse voltage somewhere here then I will connect the ground with this pulse voltage also here and then I'll connect this with the positive terminal. So when the pulse voltage is high, this controlled voltage controlled switch will have a low resistance and the input can then connect to this inductor and the diode. So that's why we need to model this switch as a low resistance, so as a short during on operation and as an open circuit or a very large resistance when 
the pulse voltage is low so let's model this switch which we can do by writing a spice directive dot model let's first rename this switch as q1 so i've used this terminology of q1 and d1 in my lecture so let's stick to it and now i will write a spice directive dot model then the name of the voltage control switch which is q1 then sw and now i will define the on resistance as 0 0.001 ohms so very low resistance when it's on and the off resistance as 1 meg so capital m e g for 1 mega and then i need to define a threshold voltage vt equal to 0.5 volts because the pulse voltage is going from 0 to 1 i'll define the threshold voltage as 0 0.5 so let's put this model here and this buck converter will step down the input voltage from 12 volts to 6 volts so that's why i'll have to define now the parameters for the duty cycle so again go to a spice directive first i'll define the switching frequency as 250 kilohertz this goes here so now i will calculate the period which you know is the inverse of the switching frequency then i will define the duty cycle as another parameter and make it equal to 0.5 since we need the output voltage as 6 volts and then I need to calculate the on period so the on period is the duty cycle times the period of the switching waveform So I've defined now all the parameters. So what's left are the values of this inductor, capacitor, and resistor. So I'll choose the inductor here as 100 micro. The capacitance I'll choose as 1 micro. And the resistance as 40 ohms. So now we are ready to run our simulation and we can press this play button so we would like a transient simulation for two milliseconds and i want to start saving data from zero time onwards press ok and the first thing i want to see is the input voltage yeah so it's nice 12 volts now on the same plot pane i would like to see the voltage of the switched node so i'll take my probe here and this gives me the switched voltage and from here you can see that the voltage is switching between the input voltage 12 volts and zero Actually, it's not zero, it's minus one because the drop of the diode also adds and makes this node minus one when the switch is off. So now I will open another plot pane beneath this plot by pressing B. And now I want to see the output voltage. So take my voltage, so I'll take my voltage probe across this capacitor and here you can see so let's zoom to fit 
so we have this initial transient and then the voltage is reaching a steady state of around 6.2 volts or something I can add a cursor here so as I move this cursor you can see that the voltage is around 6.22 volts so we have achieved buck operation from 12 to 6 volt and now I would like to see the inductor current so I will open another plot pane and move my cursor on this inductor till I see this blue arrow so this indicates a current probe so I'll click here zoom somewhere in and you can see this familiar inductor current waveform the triangular waveform which during T on period is charging the inductor so the inductor is storing energy so I've already explained the uh, operation of a buck converter in quite some detail and during T off when the switch is turned off the inductor free wheels through this diode and releases energy back into the system so we have this so that's it for today's lecture in the next lecture we'll see a very interesting phenomena known as ringing which occurs when the inductor runs dry or another word when the lowest point of this ripple hits zero so right now you can see it's around 100 milliampere when this hits zero the operation moves from continuous conduction to discontinuous conduction mode and then since there is no current in the inductor we see a ringing across this switched voltage here so this we'll observe in the next lecture so stay tuned and see you again bye